Afghanistan. I'm Matt Mulcahy, along with Frank Malfitano, the founder, executive director of the Syracuse International Jazz Fest. New name, a great new show this year, festival, week-long. Uh, welcome back. It's great to be here, Matt. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. I enjoy this very much, talking to you about anything. Well, and specifically, Jazz Fest is back. It's usually Jazz Fest or basketball with us. Yes, that's true. Yes, yes that's true. yeah, yeah. Well, well, we can we can riff on any topic. We I certainly suppose, can at any time. Um, it's going to be it's next week. Although whenever somebody's watching us, that's kind of irrelevant. The time frame. Jazz Fest. Tell me about the week. This is this is a week long event. It's a Wednesday through Sunday. You've really expanded since the kind of rebirth post COVID. Um, Tell me, tell me about it. Tell me the, the broad overview. Well, I, I think the initial goal was to revive the festival and bring it back. It had been kind of dormant on hiatus for about four years, in part because of COVID. And we hadn't been downtown for 22 years. So it just seemed like the right confluence, the right timing, you know, to bring it back. And we did. And we had very little sponsorship support, but we had valuable sponsorship support that year. We had Amazon, we had Onondaga County, and we had some federal money from uh, Senator Schumer. And uh, uh, that enabled us to do a three-day festival. And we resurrected the club night, which we used to do years ago in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And it was great. You know, we had uh, national acts appearing in the clubs and whatever. But it dawned on me that we've got such wonderful talent here in central New York that this would be a great showcase opportunity on opening night. And 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 uh, Price Chopper and Market 32 embraced that and got behind it. This year we got a grant from the Central New York Arts Council. And uh, those two in tandem have made it possible for us to expand. The first year I think we had something like 15 bands and the second year, we had maybe 21 bands. And this year, we've got 26 bands in 21 different clubs. So we're really excited about that because it also show, showcases uh, all of the cool places, the taverns and the bars and the restaurants and the gin bills and uh, right. Right, the bistros that we have downtown. And, and those folks are great. They're great. And your, your website is, is excellent, by the way. Is it just a primary resource if people want to know what the schedule is? Uh, Syracuse Jazz Fest. If you Google it, it comes up right, right at the top of the search. But it has the Wednesday listing of all the artists, and it seems like it goes on forever, quite honestly. It does go on you forever. You can really make a trip around downtown, multiple stops on that night to hear, uh, pick your favorites, I guess, right? And I think that's the object. You know, back in the day in New York City on 52nd Street, you used to be able to go from the three deuces to the, you'd bop from club to club, right? And um, so this gives people a nightclub hopping experience, and it gets them to experience more than one band. And you can probably, uh, the first year, I think Kathy and I saw 15 bands. Really? Well, you need track shoes and roller skates and a <laughs> golf cart, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can do it, right? Yeah. And we have little groupings. So if you want to stay around Clinton Square, you can. If you want to stay in Salina Street in the Central Corridor, <coughs> excuse me. If you want to stay in Salina Street in the Central Corridor, you can. If you want to go to Hanover Square, you can. If mm -hmm. you want to go to Armory Square, you can. But there's something going on all over downtown that evening. Mm -hmm. And that's really uh, an economic engine that night, isn't it? Oh, God. You know, yeah. a lot of money spent on whatever, a bite to eat, getting a drink, uh, whatever it might be. That's a, that's a boost for, for the artists, for the artistic community, for the downtown businesses. It costs us over $30,000 to produce that opening night, but... Uh, because of our sponsors, we can do it, and we can put a lot of musicians to work. We have 150 mm -hmm. Syracuse-based really? jazz artists working that night. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah. It's great. It's an economic engine. From that standpoint, it helps the bars and restaurants. Yep. It helps downtown. It brings people downtown. It gives people who are visiting from another city who are coming in for Jazz Fest a look at what we have to offer mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Right. And then you get to Thursday. And, and Thursday is a little different this year because you're, you're all in, you're three days in Clinton. It's three nights in Clinton Square. Right, and, and, and you have the Mavericks Thursday night as your headliner amongst many? Yes, the they're, Mavericks. They're great. They're great. And, and, and fun. And, and part of the reason, they're really fun, and I think they're one of the best live bands on the planet. And one of the reasons we have them on Thursday nights is because no one can follow them. We've had them before. It's impossible to follow them. The party's too good. They need their own night. Yeah. And they deserve their own night. They're a great band that's been around for a long time, and they're terrific.
And wonderful people. Who else is up on Thursday night? Uh, Thursday night, I think Catherine Russell is going to be there. Mm-hmm. She she has been a backup singer for Steely Dan for a thousand years, and she also backed up David Bowie and Bette Midler. I mean, she's a great singer on her own. She has about eight albums out on her own, and she's terrific. Very entertaining, very New Orleans. Her father was Louis Russell, who was uh, Louis Armstrong's musical director. In, oh, really? In, yeah, in New Orleans. And her mother, Carlene, was a bass player who was with the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. So she's got a real great pedigree, and she's a great entertainer. And we also have uh, Bill O'Connell is coming in with a Latin jazz all-star group with Conrad Herwig and uh, Robbie Amin and Lincoln Goines and uh, Don Braden. That's going to be fun. And then Friday night, um, Kenny G. I mean, I would think Clinton Square will be bursting at the seams. He's, I, I is, he, so. is he the most popular jazz artist uh, in, say, the last 30 years in terms of sales? Christmas album, obviously, is, is a record setter. I, I don't think there's any question that he's the best-selling jazz artist of the last several decades, yeah. you know? I mean, he broke in at 17 when he was in high school playing for Barry White's Love Unlimited Orchestra. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he's got it. Again, Kenny's got a real interesting history. I first saw him at Jabberwocky on the SU campus with the Jeff Lorber Fusion really? Group. Right about that time, he was breaking off and doing his first album. And uh, he sold over 75 million albums. I mean, he's amazing. He's a great entertainer. He's iconic, mm-hmm. tremendous personality. What I love about him is he's got a little bit of that Las Vegas showbiz New York glitz. You know, we're losing that in the entertainment industry. Mm. The Sammy Davises of the world, yeah. the Frank Sinatras, they're gone. But Kenny carries that tradition on, and I love it. And I, he was he was up at OCC when you were up at OCC on the campus. As we I had recall. him at OCC, and we had him uh, we had him again. He was so great. We had him again a couple of years later for the 30th anniversary over at Jamesville Beach. Right, right, right. When yeah. we were over there, and he was yeah. tremendous both times. Yeah. And earlier in the night, Frida Payne. All that I have is a band of gold. I love right? that's really you're a pretty good singer, man. You well, know, you I don't know. think people really know that about you, <laughs> but you really are. And uh, but that's her hit. And band it, of Gold was a big band, hit. Yeah, big hole. Mega, you know, R and B hit crossover, yeah. a number one song for her. And now she's doing a tribute, a celebration of Ella Fitzgerald. She's a great singer. She's been at it for a long time, and she'll be appearing with a big band. Mm-hmm. And I'm, uh, you know, featuring a lot of the best areas from this player. Yeah. Uh, players from this area. I'll get it right one of these days. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, I'm really excited about that. And, and then Saturday night, um, you know, I know, I know Gino Vanelli and the OJs are your, are your primetime players. What else do you need to know? You know, right. I mean, that's pretty great. We also have James Carter, a great saxophonist uh-huh. out of Detroit who's been here many times in different configurations. And he, he's coming in doing a tribute to Eddie Lockjaw Davis called Looking at Lock. Hmm. He's a scholar. He gets into themes and does great things. But he's one of the best players in the world. And uh, Gino, of course, is fabulous. We haven't had him in about 20 years, and I'm really excited that he's coming back. You know, he tours sporadically. He's an artiste. He really is. But what So he's a- not out there that much. This is a, this is a get to have him come to your festival. I right? think it is, yeah. yeah. You know, he does a limited number of dates annually. He just did a big tour in Europe that was sold out and all over Western Europe and, mm-hmm. and parts of Eastern Europe. But uh, we're thrilled that he's coming back. He's great. He's a great singer, man. And he's got a bunch of hits, and everybody will be singing along and dancing in the yeah, aisles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember my, my, my dad has a Gino Vanelli album that we used to, he's you, know, you know, kind of do our own impression of Gino Vanelli when we were kids. What really? a distinct voice, you oh, know? God, yeah. Powerful. He's kind of like Papra. You know, he's kind of like a Josh yes. Grobin. yeah. Andrea Bocelli, Gene Pitney, if yeah. you're old enough to remember who yeah, the great powerful. Gene Pitney was. Very powerful voice. And the OJs. The OJs. What can you say about them? They've sold 150 million albums. Give me their hits. Uh, for the love of money. Money, 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 money. Yep, yep. Uh, backstabbers. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Smile on your face. Yeah, all the yeah, time. They want yeah. to take your place. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the backstabbers. Uh, I love music. Yeah. I Every love kind of music. music. Yeah. That's the one. Kind of, yeah. And then, of course, they did uh, this little thing that did pretty well called the Love Train. Oh, my gosh. This is the last stop, by the way, on the Love Train tour. This is the last tour for the OJs after really? 60 years. Really? Yeah. They're in the Vocal uh, Hall of Fame. They're in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. They're in the, the R&B Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll I, Hall of Fame. It strikes me there's going to be a lot of dancing, not a lot of sitting. A lot of choreography from But I'm talking about too. the audience. Well, both. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be. They a, do a lot of the choreography, too, yeah, in, the, in that classic sense. Yeah. It's going to be a real party. That's going to be great. I, I can envision Clinton Square being uh, just 
filled packed. to the rim Friday and Saturday and Thursday too. Yeah. Um, for that matter. And then I also like Sunday deserves a little attention too. The the jazz gospel idea to wrap up this weekend. Tell me about that. Yeah, that's a work in progress, but it's really coming along nicely. We love partnering with Syracuse University. I'm an alum, as you know, and and uh, it's great to be at Hendricks Chapel, which is kind of the spiritual center, and we get to say thanks mm -hmm. for a beautiful weekend, you mm -hmm. know, and we get to thank the man upstairs, mm -hmm. and, and um, I think it's a special way to end it, and the community comes out. We had a 1,000 people at Hendricks Chapel last year. Really? We do a free jazz picnic lunch outside. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's kind of going to the roots of the music itself, isn't it? Through, it is. Back to the church. And, it is. Yeah. Yeah, the call and response thing in jazz is really, uh, you know, a cornerstone of gospel mm -hmm. and African-American roots music. And um, so it, this is a logical tie-in for us and a great way to end the festival. I was just listening to an interview with John Williams, the, the Oscar-winning composer, mm -hmm. about the evolution of public performance of music over time mm -hmm. and how... Uh, you know, churches were were first yes. as the place, then concert halls, and we're talking about over centuries, then concert halls, and then and then modern venues as we know them today. Um, and and it it really it really relates, I think, to this kind of going into a, a at least a quasi religious space, Hendricks Chapel being sort of non denominational, um, and and having that kind of music at, as an exclamation point to your week. You know? Also, as you just pointed out, we're tapping into the history of the music. Yeah. The history of American music and African American music in particular. And um, I, you know, people ask me, how do, what do you consider yourself? You know, they once asked Bob Dylan, do you call yourself a folk singer or a protest singer? And he said, no, actually, I think of myself as a song and dance man. <laughs> but but uh, Bob Dylan aside. Um, I think I'm a preservationist mm -hmm. as well as a presenter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of American heritage music, and, and we're very proud of that. The fact that we're able to present some of the greatest artists the world has ever created on our stages for free to people all weekend long who come in from all over the country and all over the state. And um, uh, Well, I think, I think that speaks to the multi-generational experience and, and potential, for that matter, that probably exceeds even what, what one, one might envision when you're hearing the OJs. You say they've been around 60 years. Well, it doesn't have to be you've listened to them for 60 years. You could be new to the OJs. You could be 20 years old or 30 years old. Maybe you've heard one of those songs, two of those songs here and there, didn't know who did it, but, but the music stands up. Um, because it's still vital. Right. And these artists are still vital. And that's, we're not going to present artists on fumes. Right. We're going to present artists that are still vital because we want upcoming generations to see what we experienced yeah. and how great the music was and still can be. Yeah. And the live performance oh. of actual musicians with instruments in hand. Can't beat it. You know, whether it's guitar, bass, keyboards, horns, uh, vocalists without auto-tune, without effects, without digital tracking, all those things that are so integral to the modern pop artist. Um, Which, of course, I know nothing about, because I'm an old <laughs> dinosaur, right? No, I'm old school. I'm as old school as it comes. And, I, I, and like I said, I respect the tradition, and I love the fact that the OJs come out with a show. And there are 18 people on stage, three yeah. vocalists and 18 yeah. band members. Yeah. That's 21 people on stage, man. That's not a band, that's a zip code. Yeah. But it's fun, it's yeah. great, it's what the music's all about. The spirit of what happens. And there's an intimacy to Clinton Square that I really like. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I really love about downtown. Mm -hmm. it, it, you feel like the entire community is coming out, as you mentioned, all ages, mm -hmm. all generations, you know, all faiths, all races. I love it. And it's it's worth noting too, again, for the, the unindoctrinated that that the 30 year history of Clinton Square really centers around Jazz Fest in a way. The re most recent 30 years, because you you were you were at Song Mountain, you were at Long Branch, you were at downtown the first time and and created Clinton Square in the modern era, so much so that they decided we need to resign redesign Clinton Square so we can handle festivals. And, and that's got to be in that range, right? Pushing 30 years ago, 20, yeah, at least 25 to 30 years ago. We came downtown in 1991. Right, so 30, Right, right yeah. after I took over and, the And Landmark when you were Theater. leaving downtown is when they started the renovation of Clinton Square. And made it smaller. And, right, and which has set the table for so many other festivals to have their day. 
hit and miss. I think it's fair to say that we pioneered the reuse and redevelopment in the modern era of Clinton Square as a festival site. Yeah. Yeah, without giving us too much credit for the role we played. Right. It really, at one point, I mean, uh, uh, there was a, a feature on Clinton Square recently and all the incarnations since the early 1900s as to what that square has represented. It was a farmer's market at right. one point, the canal. Sure. Okay, uh, but in the modern era, yeah, I think Jazz Fest helped define what it's become. Yeah. And we're proud of that. And, and on the night when the music's playing, whether in this case it's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, if as a music fan and you're sitting, it doesn't matter where you're sitting, standing, you brought your own lawn chair, you found a corner of a monument to sit on, whatever, right. um, you look around and you see you know, the, the history of the center of the city and the region, really, with the, the old bank buildings. And, and you know, it's really, it's really a great urban space it really is. for this. You know? And, you know, in addition to that, the other thing that I feel, because people ask me, what, how do you see Jazz Fest now that you've produced 38 of them right yeah. here? Yeah, I look at the artists that are on the stage mm. that night, whether it be Aretha Franklin mm -hmm. or Natalie Cole or mm -hmm. whomever it happens to be, the OJs, Kenny G. Whatever, I look up and I realize that the only place on planet Earth that that's happening is in Syracuse, New York, mm -hmm. for free, in my hometown. Boy, does that make me feel great about Syracuse. And I, I think it makes everybody feel great about Syracuse. And I think when the artists come in, they really get the red carpet treatment from us and from the fans. They get a real welcoming from knowledgeable fans who really appreciate what they do. And that really takes the music to another level because this is a music where the fans give back to the artists and the artists give it right back to the fans. It's very special. Why is free important? It's been such a bedrock of what you've done here, but what's that mean to the community and, and accessibility? Everything. I think it has to be free. I don't think the onus anymore, I mean, ticket prices are, are spiraling way out of control. Mm -hmm. Most families can't afford to attend anything. If people are cut off from the very music they produced and gave to the world, something's wrong with that picture. We're always going to fight for a free admission policy. We're never going to charge. We're never going to sell VIP seating. Everyone has equal access. It's as democratic as we can make it, small d. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, there's a fairness thing built into it, you know? As a kid, I went to concerts. I went to festivals. I got to see the greatest artists in the world, and it didn't cost a lot of money. Right. It cost almost nothing. Tickets were 3 or 4 sure, or $5, sure. right? We need to bring that back. We yeah. artists need to work. The musicians need to be out there in front of the people. And so our job is to get the music to the people and the people to the music. And that's what we try to do. And with regard to being downtown, uh, you know, the the suburban non-downtown participant who maybe doesn't go downtown, doesn't work downtown, they might say, well, I don't know where to park. Uh, I, I, is it safe downtown? In which I know the answer to both of those things. It's easy to park. There's a lot of parking. You might have to walk one or two blocks to get to the festival, and it couldn't be more safe. Have you ever had a problem with We've safety? never had a problem in, in four decades. Right. And um, I, I think that says a lot about our audience, and it says yeah. about, a lot about the power of the music to bring people together. Yeah. And if you go to Jazz Fest, you'll see everybody in the community. Right. It's it's really kind of remarkable. It's not like, you know, if you go to a Willie Nelson concert, you're going to see yeah. the front row is going to look like <laughs> Willie Nelson, right? Yeah. And, uh, but no, you know what I mean. Sure. Uh, it, the audiences are somewhat monosyllabic for different art forms and different disciplines of the music. You go to a pop show, you see a pop audience. You mm -hmm. go to a country show, you, uh, and so on. But uh, at Jazz Fest, you see everybody in town. And I like that. Yeah. I like that because we're a community. We're a city of multiple neighborhoods and, and multiple ethnic groups and races. And when we all come together as one, you really get to see what the city's all about. You like your position in late June? Um, kind of sends well, people off into summer before vacations hit and so on? Yes and no. I mean, uh, we've been in August and rained on. We've been in... <laughs> right, there's no guarantee on <laughs> there's that. There's no guarantees on the weather. So you're always outside. You're fighting the elements. You know what I mean? Whether or not you want to be the first... You know, you want to be out there on Memorial Day, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the non-traditional start of summer. We're right around the actual calendar start of mm -hmm. summer, you mm -hmm. know, at the end mm -hmm. of June and before the 4th of July. So, you know, look, it's, it's a short summer, although yeah. uh, it seems to be getting hotter. <laughs> but but it, it's a short summer. People try to cram it all in. They want yeah. to play golf. They want to go boating. They yep. want to, you know, go yeah. fishing, whatever, uh, have a backyard barbecue. So... 
we're competing with all that in a sense, but so we want to be great. We want to be so great that we're compelling that everybody will drop whatever they're doing and just come down. Maybe they won't come down for all three days or all five days. Maybe they'll come down for one night. Yeah. But we want to make sure on that night they have the greatest time they've ever had and they have a memory. Yeah. That, We're in the memory business, man. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That will be newly created on the uh, 2024 38th edition. Yes. You look good. 30, for an old man? For 38 years. You started I, I when you were scar, 10 years old. I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> no, actually, listen, I know I'm getting on in years, but I don't think I've really lost a step. I hope not. It doesn't look like it at thank, all. Thank you. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm proud of this year's lineup. I think it's great. I think the fact that we have a third night in Clinton Square is mm -hmm. going to be really, really big. Mm -hmm. I think our attendance will be hugely significant. Whether or not we get to the Ray Charles, mm -hmm. Diana Krall level of 2000 right. is another story. I mean, that's still a downtown record. Right. I don't Absolutely. think anybody's yeah, beaten. People literally crawling on uh, the Soldier Sailors Monument yes, for that one. Yes, yeah. they were. Yes, yeah. They literally were, and it was fun. It was exciting, it was memorable, and people have never forgotten it. Is it worth asking about the future of Jazz Fest? What would you like to ask? Well, you know. Will there be is one? Is there one next year? What's your, I do hope you have so. an outlook? You know, we're like every business. I think it's a good question. I want to answer it this way. Um, we're like every business. We start out with zero every year. Yeah. We have to raise all the money, mm -hmm. and whatever we raise, we spend, and we spend it on the festival. And the more we raise, the more we spend on the festival. Mm -hmm. And the more we put back into the community, we hire all local vendors, mm -hmm. local musicians, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I certainly hope it continues uh, as long as the fans want it to continue. Yeah. As long as people feel it's valuable to the community. And uh, they're proud of it. You know, we want it to be a tentpole event like uh, Duke versus Syracuse at the sure. Dome. Yeah. We want it to be a big deal. Yeah. As long as it can be a big deal, as long as it can be great, as long as we can raise the bar, we want to keep doing it. Well, more memories to come. I hope this so. This year's edition, Frank Malfitano, thanks for joining us and uh, hope you enjoyed the conversation. Have a good day. I know I did. <laughs> Me 